So uh, what's up first? You've got some idea on the schedule. You can read. It says welcome. So welcome, everyone. Yeah. Um, it's strange to welcome them on the last day, just, just the last <laughs> session, to say welcome just before we say goodbye. Um, yeah, I hope you've all had a, a good weekend in, uh, in Liverpool. Uh, shame the weather wasn't quite as hot as it has been the last couple of weekends, but <laughs> chances that happening three weekends in a row were pretty low, I'm afraid. Um, so, anyone else want to say anything? Because I'm just rambling. Introduce yeah. yourself. Thank you for yeah. coming. Okay. Introduce ourselves. Why don't we go from the end? Hello. I'm, I'm Fab. Obviously, Linux Outlaws. <laughs> Hi. Laura from Ubuntu UK Podcast. Yeah, I'm Dan from Linux Outlaws. I'm Dave. <laughs> no, I'm Popey. And I am Davey, and I am instantly from the Ubuntu UK podcast. And I'm Simon, and I'm Tony from the same show. So um, we need to uh, thank the people who make this possible, uh, the, the sponsors who've supported the event and uh, really given us great support. Um, we might as well do these in order. I'll do the first one, and then you guys grab on. So first up, uh, we want to give a big thank you to Linux Format magazine, Paul Hudson and all the people there. Uh, I know Neil's here as well. Neil Bodwick, yeah. there he is. Um, and Bitfolk, where's Andy? Where's Andy? Andy. Stand up, Andy. Quality VPS from Andy. Thanks yeah. for the great yeah. Bitfolk. Check out Bitfolk. The Open Learning Centre. Where's Alan? The, the Alan. Uh, the Alan. Down the front. The Alan. Alan also just gave me that cake then for Popey, oh, so an extra ah. big thank you for him. Actually, Dutchy what a bought suck those. Up. They're about two days old. No, no, I'm happy Farron to have a thanks for that, actually. I don't okay. know. All right. e- either way, I don't care. <laughs> We're going to retract the thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. Strike it from the record. Uh, we've got mm. Opsview, which are uh, the network monitoring people, aren't they? They are mm. indeed. And now I'm going to go back to the one that Dave missed, which was the Linux Emporium, who provided us with the, uh, a lot of the AV kit for the, uh, the projectors and stuff like that, and the wireless and things. So uh, yeah. thank you, guys. I know... I saw J- John at the back there, and Robert, and uh, Quentin, and all the people who've yeah. helped us out from Linux Emporium, because yeah. they've basically provided the projectors and, and all kinds of stuff, so we couldn't do it without them. Thank you very much. And Laura? Recruit12, who yeah. uh, do recruitment for this kind of geeky jobs. Yeah. Yep, Linuxy jobs and things like that. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, so check, check out their website if you're looking for uh, a job. Good old Linux. Might fun. be after this. <laughs> <laughs> Linux and we've Fund got sponsors as well. Um, yep. We've got Linux Fund, who do a great credit card. Um, if you use it, you can, you know, they take some money off that and give it to open source projects like Inkscape and um, help out the community. I, and great, I heard so you don't have to pay it back. I don't know if that's true or not. Don't quote me. Yeah, the good thing about it is they don't charge you any extra. They just take the money from the credit card company. So you can do good by not you know, having to give any extra money or anything, which is cool. Let the credit company pay for it. Um, we've got to thank Zebo, Alex, Alex Harrington, wherever he is. Yep. Uh, there he is. And all the other people who've helped out with the displays, all of these displays <laughs> and Including the schedule. Including John Spriggs. Um, and we need to mention uh, also John the Nice Guy, wherever he is. Ta-da. There he is, yeah. right out in the front. <laughs> the <laughs> microphone monkey. We also had a load of prizes for the raffle yesterday. We're going to quickly go through these ones just to remind yeah. everybody. Wiley and Apress gave us some books. We had a one and a half terabyte hard drive from eBuyer. Canonical gave us those funky bags. Uh, Viglin, the little tiny PCs. Uh, Alusha, a slightly larger funky PC. <laughs> and uh, Becky Nubra, who made the OG like mm. these things. Cool. Excellent. Thank you much, everybody. One of the uh, groups of people who've worked very hard over the weekend have been our lovely orange shirted crew, um, ably led by Anna. So uh, if you're standing in an orange shirt or you've been a member of the crew, stand up and give everybody a wave because uh, yeah, you deserve all the it. crew. You deserve a big round of applause. There's some up here in the back. And Keith at the back there. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think Anna's just had to rush off because she had oh. a phone call oh, and dear. she had to rush off about 10 minutes ago. Okay. So. Well, she'll hear the recording, hopefully. She yeah, does. she will do. But big thanks to Anna for yeah. managing the crew and everyone who's yeah. helped out on the crew. But, but honestly, they really took the stress off because it's been quite stressful for us a lot. But we've just been able to just forget about everything. And they've just Speak been getting on with it. Everyone needs to rent a crew. There's a gaping, <laughs> set of gaping mouths looking at you, Dave. Um, the, a bit of the crew were here at 8 o'clock Saturday morning and they were setting up um, banners and tables and helping people hunt boxes around and, and doing all sorts of good stuff. So it was great. Thank you very much indeed. Next up. 
Well, we've already thanked John Spriggs, haven't we? we so have. Don't want to do it again. I think you Should we give him a second, second thanks? thanks? Thanks again, John. Yeah, uh, thanks, John Spriggs. All right. Why not? Um, for doing all the, the display soft, the software, the campfire uh, manager that he's done, which he's rewritten. Uh, he even rewrote it for us about a month ago when yeah. we changed the spec. As thanks, all, John. As all the <laughs> software developers in the room will appreciate, as we as the client changed the spec at the last minute and he had to rewrite the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but well done, John. Thanks for that. We like to keep him on his toes. And Laura Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Laura's the only one who can pronounce Laura's last name. Also <laughs> known as CZ Tab. Yeah. Who has done Which I don't it, think she appreciates. Who is she up here? She was downstairs. I think she might have snuck off. The, basically, Laura came to us and said, do you want any help organising the event? And has organised most, basically, the exhibition and, uh, and other significant chunks of the, uh, of the and weekend And the bar well, last night. And the bar yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And she's just been absolutely fabulous, considering she's not you know, a member of the, uh, the team morally obliged to help out. Um, so I wanted to give her a special mention as well. And I, th- I want to give her a special thanks as well. She spilt my drink over me last night, and I was soaking wet, so I want to give her a special thanks for that. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, well done. Great. And if you're quick at the end, you can get a chance to do that as well. If you pay extra. <laughs> yeah. Just before we get into the, the, the first section of the show, um, we also need to thank uh, Liverpool John Moores and Open Labs. Oh, yes. Andy Goodwin at the back there for the sponsorship as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thank you very much to them. Yeah, yeah. My hands are starting to wake. Yeah. So you're, you're, I, I tried to pluck some segments from your show. I, I've heard your show once or twice. You forked <laughs> our show. <laughs> <laughs> we did well, something with it. I did patch it, yeah. Uh, and one of the first things was releases. So do you want to go through some of the releases this week? Yeah, okay. Well, um, who wants to start then? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I'll do the first one. Uh, first one is the uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. Beta is now out, so <laughs> thank you, Some John. Some people really pleased about that. John, where's where's John Chris Potter and Aid and all them? They're usually really into that. Is there anybody here uh, who yeah, is Chris will be pleased by that? Is there anybody here who's not directly employed by Red Hat who who is uh, really keen to to see some of the features in Rel? Uh, Chris Proctor, Chris. Is, John, Three. I think you're technically employed by Red Hat only for two weeks. All oh, right, okay. Chris, what are you so excited to see about in uh, in, in Rel? Hold on, there's a mic coming. It, everything. Perfect in every way. It's perfect in every way, yes. But it doesn't have aubergine. Exactly, it's perfect in (laughs) every way. That's what makes it perfect. (laughs) Which side? And the the buttons are on the right side as well, which is good. (laughs) The right side or the left side? That's not bad. The proper side. We're about three minutes in and the buttons have been mentioned once already. (laughs) (laughs) Just you wait. Right. (laughs) Someone want to do the next? Yeah, Easy Peasy 1.6 came out. You've used Easy Peasy, haven't you? Yeah, I use Easy Peasy on, well, this netbook, in fact. And it doesn't work with that projector? Uh, it doesn't work with that projector, no. Um, although That's it, it has worked for. with other projectors that I've used in the past. What's so it based on? Uh, it's based on Ubuntu, oh, actually. And it, but it's got Flash installed on it. So it's about the only machine I've got that's got Flash. But yeah, yes. um, so new version of that out with a new, new polished kind of netbook GUI on it. Um, and there's some funky goodness going on there. They've, they've brought down a lot of the Ubuntu netbook changes into Easy Peasy. So it's worth a look at, uh, worth a look at on that. Has anybody used Easy Peasy here? Or am I the only one? Well, Mark's hand's gone up. So there's just the two of us. Oh, well, okay. You know, it's still good. Didn't you, you guys reviewed Easy Peasy at some point, didn't you? No, we mentioned it. We, sorry, I'll get on mic. We mentioned it. <laughs> but, just um, chat here. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> talking to Alan again, don't worry. Um, yeah, we mentioned it, but I haven't done a proper review of it. But yeah, I've, I've heard it's very good. It's, uh, wasn't it, didn't it used to be called something else and they had to change the name to Easy Peasy oh, yes. to satisfy the Ubuntu uh, trademark? It, trademarks. Yeah, was, it, yeah. was it Ubuntu or was it the other one? Was it Ubuntu? Don't know. There's e- too many of them. Too cares. many derivatives. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I can cool. I can talk about the next one. Uh, on, next release is Fedora 13 Beta, and Has which I'm actually that? had a huge fail today because I lent oh, my no, laptop yet. to uh, Campbell Barton, who did a great talk about um, the new Blender Open Movie project, and obviously wanted to play uh, video files, which my laptop didn't. Uh, <laughs> I was throwing like kernel oopses and all kinds of stuff. But other than that, uh, Fedora 13 is awesome. Um, check it out. Uh, nice wallpaper. When's it finally released? Um, the final release is... Mid-May, next, I think. Yeah, yeah. About what, 14th or something yeah. like well, that. Well, goodness, what new goodness and stuff's coming in, in Fedora 13? Uh, Anything in particular? Oh, God. Sorry, you on the spot, spot there. <laughs> off the, yeah, is off there the, any off the top of my here? head. One thing I find really, uh, really cool is that they have Pino by default now, which is an um, identical yeah. Twitter client, which Most is really cool. Weapon. And there's lots of stuff under the hood. Basically, cool. it's all the, all the new 
well, goodness. So, so Fedora doesn't ship with Gwibber? No, which I'm really glad about. <laughs> Is uh, Fedora still running Gnote? Um, yes, they are. Apparently not because it's not mono or something. Don't not ask because me. it's not mono. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have no yeah. idea. But they, they are, yeah. Double I, I don't think they ship any mono application. Um, Tomboy? With, with their default CD. No, no Gnote uh, replaces DVD. Tomboy. Of course, yeah. Come on, get the program. What's the uh, photo no. manager? Um, I think Shotwell. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so I think that's about all the releases we've had recently. Yeah. Isn't it? There's nothing else. I don't think there's been any no other releases. No, anybody, anybody, have we forgotten something? Anybody think of a distro that's um, been just, released? There's a minor um, Ubuntu release. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> just a little thing. Did Did I heard Ubuntu? there was some. Uh, Anyone? Some one. Minor we've only got one person one. here that uses Ubuntu, really. I can't believe that. Wow. <laughs> I know, so not, yeah, because a couple at the back. Seriously. Well. Actually, the, the, the excitement people. for Fedora is actually outweighed Ubuntu. I, I mean, I'm not biased, but I'm somewhat surprised. <laughs> I, I thought Ubuntu might have had a bit more of a following than that. Seriously. Just Hands okay. up for everyone who runs Ubuntu of any kind. That's better. Hey. hey. Yeah, yeah, right, you're just playing with me, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. report back to Mark, don't you? <laughs> Your machines will all get switched off. <laughs> Hang on, can Dorbers, can you add these people to the list, please? Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Mark already Third knows. Mark knows. So, so everybody you, uh, enjoying the button release? Yeah, any of you upgraded to Lucid yet? Some? Yeah, yeah cool. there's a few. Um, Laz, Laz Pound has been doing the inst- install fest down there. He's yeah. upgraded a few people to, uh, to Lucid and yeah. installed it on some new machines as well. He's been doing great work there, actually. Yeah. So, any of you that upgraded, did you? How many of you upgraded rather than reinstall? Did it work? <laughs> no, <laughs> no one. So no, the man there is holding a microphone, and he said no. Yeah. Take the microphone away. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened with the release then? Because I heard some news about there was some problem with the original uh, ISO image. Yeah. Am I not supposed to mention that? No, when, well, yeah. <laughs> just knows it. I just wondered what happened. Like, oh. mm-hmm. On release day, there was a bug that was previously found but it was deemed to be not suitable to release of that where essentially Ubuntu was trying to take over the world and if you That's not had, a bug. if you were if you were dual booting in certain instances it wouldn't pick up the other one. But you know we don't really And, and then in that. English uh, the the bug was it didn't detect other operating systems on the disk. Yeah. So it would it's still not a bug. Yeah, yeah well <laughs> yeah arguable Windows doesn't so yeah, why should yeah. we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything so Windows that, can Yeah, they do, had to respin all the ISO images and rebuild them. Actually, and that's why it was late. Actually, okay. mid cycle, one of the things I do, I'm also involved with the Mythbuntu project. Halfway through the development cycle, like nearly half the people that use that actually got their computers converted into a Mythbuntu machine. I thought that was brilliant. I thought we were trying to get more people out there using it, but I don't know, it didn't really wash that. So, has anybody else got any other releases that they've uh, seen in the last couple of weeks that they want to talk about? Anybody use anything else that's been had a major release? No, excellent. Sorry? Oh, Statler, oh, yes. How could yeah. we forget that? Crunchbang, Crunch Statler. Bang. Yeah. Oh, we looked to Back see if it was out, but it's there. not out yet, is it? You need to update your website, Phil. <laughs> Are you aware yeah. your website's been off all weekend? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, Crunchbang. So what's, what's new in the great release of Crunchbang? Well, there's John springing the mic. John's oh, running sorry. a microphone over to you now. Come on, John. See, he's still working hard. He needs another thanks later on for this. Yeah. <laughs> Community <laughs> hero or whatever. The Not a lot. You don't really lot. want to try it because it may make your computer go crunch. Excellent. Hey. You, 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 <laughs> well, well done to sell. Uh, your, yeah, your, your I think that's a sound that. bite we can use for future, I think, isn't it? <laughs> don't run crunch, crunch back. No, well, one of the major things you've changed is you've changed from being, Ubuntu being your base to Debian, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and he's this, very this happy. brings back fond memories of when was it our first episode where we interviewed Philip? No, it was midway through season one. Yeah, but anyway, mm. yeah, and we were talking about. Yeah, and you've made, written quite a, a good blog post about why that that is. Uh, why you've done yeah, that. it's uh, it's got nothing to do. You know, it, it's not yeah. no. Um, well, it's not a reflection on Ubuntu because, you know, Ubuntu is a great, great operating system, so it's just personal choice. So. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Nothing you're to do with Windows buttons. Like with it, really. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So. Excellent. And that's an open box based distro, isn't it? So if anybody needs something really lightweight to run on, something like a Viglin MPCL, perhaps you've won one this weekend, uh, it's worth, certainly worth a try. Perhaps the, the older, more stable release might be worth trying first. Yeah, it's open box, and um, there's an XFCE version available now as well. So. All right, excellent. Yep. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed.
Um, so we thought we'd talk about a, a world without Flash. Um, Steve Jobs says it's buggy, closed, power hungry. Um, Adobe think it's critical for the web. Hang on, let's just, let's just rethink about that. Steve Jobs <laughs> yeah. said it's buggy, closed and power hungry. Yeah, Mr. so Apple. basically he... <laughs> Anybody else think that? No, okay. And after just, just that, me. he said, and Flash is crap as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as much as I hate to say this, but I think in this instance, Steve Jobs is right. So Ooh, wow. you agree with Steve Jobs? This is on record, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. It, I mean, I, I don't think I have to, to tell anybody that Flash is not, not only on Linux, but everywhere is buggy, yeah. crashy, and just burns your laptop into a, just a steaming pile of ash. Um, and it's a hor horribly inefficient way to do the things it does, like to, to, for, for the video and all the other stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, the Flash standard is controlled by Adobe, isn't it? As, as far as I'm aware. Would anyone disagree with that? I, d I don't know yeah. for sure, but that's yes. my understanding. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it is. Yeah, see, see the little disclaimer I put in there, just in case I got it wrong? But anyway, <laughs> um, how many people have actually tried? Because there's like two popular alternatives. We've got Ganache and... Um, Swift Deck. Yeah, and Swift Deck. I mean, actually, Swift Deck, I actually found to be really quite good. Benjamin uh, works for Red Hat now, doesn't he? John, do you know? John Shrugs. No. <laughs> I, thought, I think the guy behind Swift Deck works for Red Hat. And um, the Ganache guy has run out of money. Oh, right. So yeah. the chances of there being any further development of either of those projects is close to nil. But I mean, they were what are you, making what are you really If somebody works for Red Hat, they're not doing open source work. Well, I think anyway. he's working on other stuff. <laughs> okay. Oh, right, okay. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, certainly it's one of the, uh, often perceived as one of the great evils of, of the. Um, of the software world, the fact that we're so reliant, even on, a, on an open source stack where we've basically reinvented just about everything anyway, is that we're still stuck with Flash. Um, and the open source implementations are not quite as good as the real ones. You know, sometimes you can't go to YouTube and watch it. Um, and people have to sully their, their, their open source computers with this other stuff that doesn't always work. Can I just clarify what you said there? Did you say watch it? Yes. Go to YouTube and watch it? Videos. Yes. Okay. Watch videos on YouTube. You might have heard of it. Um, yeah. So You're talking to a man in a tweed hat here. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I say we didn't have Flash in my day. I used to watch binary streams go over a network cable. <laughs> oh, oh, Davey's all hurt now. He so me really. Should we be if if we if what Fab says is right and Steve Jobs is right and it is buggy, closed, and power hungry? Should we be siding with? Steve Jobs, and no. say, you're right, we put our thought behind you, because if Adobe either open sources Flash or burns in a fire or people just stop supporting it or switch to something else like HTML5, then we win, or should we still say Apple are evil and we don't touch them at all? Yes. Do you Apple think are evil. No. Do you think that's really why Steve Jobs doesn't want it on iPhones? It's more likely that he tried to buy it and, and didn't get, didn't get yeah. the, uh, the job done, if you excuse the pun. And, uh, <laughs> and now he's bitter because he didn't buy them. It does seem know. to have a bit of a personal ring about it. Yeah. He's trying to put Adobe Flash out of business or something. Wasn't mm. he the same chap that said uh, that OG shouldn't be included in browsers? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that is an open standard. Well, so. he also said that there is a patent pool being pulled together against the OG Theora of Orbis patents and microsoft have said codex. how many patents are against linux you know yeah, it's yeah. well he also says nobody would watch a video on an ipad uh, on an on an ipod mm. you know he says all, all kinds of stuff that it just doesn't make any sense so and we then, ignore him as a crank <laughs> i don't know i i think it's um i wouldn't like i think he's right in this instance um, and I, I actually think it's sorting itself out. I actually think the chances of people just migrating away from Flash and using, for example, HTML5 for video are a lot higher than we get in an open source alternative that works as good as Flash does. Oh. It works as bad as it. What are the main pe things people use Flash for? It is like you, it's YouTube, YouTube and games. Oh, it's videos and games. Mm. So I, the videos, okay, we could do with HTML5, and there are some sites that are already doing that because of the iPad and the iPhone. But what about all those little Flash games that people sit and play at work? Or I know? think the, the the big problem is like Java. the, the internet. <laughs> oh, Back no. to Java again. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 
I think the, the the big thing is the interactive stuff. You know, I mean, there's ads which nobody wants anyway, so yeah. we could lose that. But for example, we use Linux Outlaws. We use Flash to broadcast li well, our live video. We use Ustream because it's the only yeah. thing I could get to work. Right. And it's the only thing I use Flash for. I, I now actually try to watch um, YouTube and HTML5 as much as I can. You know, I try to just avoid Flash wherever I can. Um, but there's still some things that you just can't do with anything else. And lots of people do like crazy website stuff in it. Like they do, do menus. If, if you ever go to like, for example, if you go to a Hollywood um, movie site, they're all done in Flash. Yeah. And they're terrible. They're not, they're not accessible for people, you know, with disabilities. It's just, they look shit. Uh, it takes, takes 50 hours to get, you know, you, you start up the site and it takes 20 minutes until you can actually see what the site's about because they have to play like a two-hour intro video. And a progress bar. <laughs> yeah, loading. Which is a Flash progress bar. Yeah. Have we got any Flash developers in the room? He is pretty flashy. I used to be a Flash developer. Chat. I'll admit that. I used to be a Flash developer. No shame in it. Well, there wasn't, you know, five years ago I did it, but, yeah. you know. It pays. Sorry? Mm. Wouldn't have chat, chat roulette. roulette. Without, without Flash, flash. there'd be no live without chat roulette. Um, Come on, John, run, run, run. <laughs> just too slow. Sorry, too slow. So Sorry, how, do you, how do you feel about people being We're just so being really awkward, and now we pick someone over at the back over there, <laughs> yeah. so John has to go over there, and then back over here. <laughs> how how do you John. feel about the, the negativity towards Flash? Um, well, the iPhone SDK isn't open source, um, and you can't do a lot with that. Mm. Um, and no webcams in HTML5. If you had webcams, you mm. probably could. Yeah. He so makes a point. So... It, uh, Rather, uh, com yeah, it's comparing the, uh, the sort of the, I the iPad. You know, iPad's not going to have Flash, uh, and that's what Steve Jobs has talked about. But in general, is the negativity that people perceive around Flash? Do you think it's it's uh, it's accurate, or is it misplaced, or just a lack of understanding, or is it really uh, you know, bad in some way? Um, well, it, it does crash a lot, but um, it's the fact you've got the socket connections that let you do a lot of really cool things, like long polling page comet stuff. Um, it does have its uses that haven't been plugged by any of the browsers. Do you think the HTML5 stuff is going to take away a lot of Flash stuff, other than the webcams? Um, it has an opportunity to, but when? <laughs> right. Yeah. I suppose. It's a should critical mass thing. Should we all be, like, uh, we have a Flash plug. I think ours is broken, so that's why you can't listen to our podcast in Flash on our website. And you've got Ustream for Flash. Should we be encouraged, encouraged and should we be moving away from it? I would, if I find anything, if I find any solution that gives us the ability to, like, stream video stream video uh, without setting up like a huge server farm and you know um i i do that um uh, because to be honest it like you stream doesn't work like we hardly get ever get one show where it doesn't crash uh half time through the show then we have to restart it again the interface is terrible i think that's a content filter i think it blocks out when it hears rubbish <laughs> yeah possibly it, it will crash a lot more then <laughs> but so so who here actually um Flash just works fine for them. Let's have a cheer for Flash if it just works and you're happy with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's about a dozen hands going up. Yeah. Not much of a cheer. How about Andy People who just yeah. don't care. Yeah. Just don't care. Uh, a different dozen hands. Yeah. So the people who don't care aren't the people it just works for. Mm. That's kind of odd, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And who here hates Flash with a passion and wants to burn it into a big... Yeah. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> but how will uh, this new codec that Google have bought and have just announced that they're going to open source that new video codec, how will that affect all of this? Because it could go into HTML5. I forget the name of it, but they bought... Um, VP8, I think. VP8, it? yeah. They, they just bought it, and it's one of the most Still powerful do... video codecs that, you know, Still won't around. do webcams and clicky games. Okay. Well, you don't know that. Do you? How does a video codec do webcams? <laughs> Good point. I, I'm, not f I'm not fully convinced we are the right people to be discussing that. Well, I don't that, know. Uh, Good. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, how does oh. Flash do webcams then? You know, there must be a way to, to do something, make is. a solution. Just um, a comment on the webcams things. I have seen some uh, HTML5 stuff using W3C widgets and a JavaScript library, which I can't remember the name of. Um, which takes pictures from webcams and displays them using a canvas tag rather than a video tag. So it looks like it is um, sort of on its way, at least, that you'd be able to do webcams with HTML5. Mm. And as far as um, clicky games and things like Homestar Runner cartoons and things like that, that could be done with um, SVG and JavaScript. Yeah. Cool. Yeah? 
I hope everybody else understood that more than I did. <laughs> yeah, it's we okay. all just sit here and go, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. He's got long hair. He must be right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a beard. And, uh, it's yeah, the beard, beard that means yeah. I must be right. The beard gives gravitas. <laughs> I do need to apologise to Mark, because I was playing the yeah, house music in on random from my uh, iPod when he was just setting up for his talk, and it was playing Dude Looks Like a Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, man. <laughs> Who's here has ever watched Room 101? Yeah? Hey, so you're going to know what this is going to be about. Yeah? What would we put in Room 01 from the Floss world? So any... <laughs> I just saw okay. someone point at okay. someone just else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dave. We want to put Dave. Just uh, for the benefit of all the people who are not from Britain. Um, apparently, Room 101 is this... You know, you, it's, I don't know, it's a TV show or something. Yeah. Yeah. You, you put stuff in room 101 that you, you want to get rid of. Yeah, it mm. came from so. George Orwell in 1984. But it's been yeah. adopted by the BBC. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean, from this, we're going to include sort of perhaps people, programs, concepts, or arguments. So, we're all going to start. Now, if we work from one end to the other, does anyone have any preference? Just no, go, go for, for it. it. Okay, go on, Tony, go for it. Uh, now, I had a really good thing that I thought of, and I get to go first, and it's just popped out of my mind. That's what I was going to put in. The first thing I was going to put in is not directly connected to the Floss world, but it's something that's been on my mind a lot recently, and that is the first past the post voting system mm. under which we elect um, our MP representatives. Now, we've heard a lot about that. Oh, get, there's a man miming a clap. <laughs> silently supporting me. You know you're well supported yeah, when you get a silent a, clap. A, a mind clap. Um, it's at least better than a Definitely. slow hand clap. The, we heard a lot about the politics um, this weekend, and uh, if, last year when we did this, uh, if we'd have said we'd had like four talks about uh, the political landscape and how it affects geeks, we'd have said, what? You know. yeah. But then general election comes along, digital economy bill comes along, and uh, suddenly we're all talking about it, and that's great. I think it caught... Um, it caught us out, and Simon Phipps reflected a little bit on this in his talk. It caught us out. We were a bit politically naive. I had no idea what a probing motion was, so when... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very wrong. Now, <laughs> did Popey I, explain it to you? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he did demonstrate. What the hell do they do in your parliament? What the hell do they do? Time yeah. for the talks. On yeah. <laughs> uh, I, had no, I, had no, I had no idea what, what that sort of, you know, the, the political process was about and the fact that, you know, the, the votes happen in certain ways and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it was a real eye-opener for me, watching two days worth of BBC Parliament, basically. Fortunately, I was on holiday for a couple of days, so I could do that. Um, I think we were politically naive, but... Uh, we had to come to understand that basically that if you are against the digital economy bill, the problem was essentially that the wrong party was in power. If you disagreed with that bill, they had enough MPs that they could push it through no matter what. Um, and that was largely because of the first past the post voting system. And so that's why I wanted to go into Room 101. Mm. That's my thoughtful answer. It's very serious yeah, and very thoughtful. Cool. <laughs> uh, that and uh, rubber chickens. Is that <laughs> rubber better? chickens? Yeah, rubber chickens. Oh, you've been watching uh, too much Monkey Island, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> So how would you change it? What would you change to make it more representative so that things can work for us? Thanks, Simon. Um, <laughs> yeah, just fix it, Tony. So, some sort of... Pro- <laughs> well, I mean, Alan, Alan Bell had a great chart in his talk earlier today um, showing, the, showing that sort of dis- the, uh, disparity between what you would actually get if, you, if, a, if a third of the country voted for one party, a third of the country voted for the, uh, another party and, and the remaining third for the other party. Um, it, it, it's quite a distance. You wouldn't get... Uh, a three-way split, an even three-way split in the House of Commons, and you could you could redress that balance by some sort of proportional representation. So I'm not a, a constitutional reform expert. I'll leave that to uh, Larry Lessig and people like that. Um, but some sort of proportional representation, I think. Mm. That's my answer. But I mean, not to get too deeply into it, but the the kind of the, the arguments a lot of people have against proportional representation is it does leave things open to kind of maybe not necessarily very nice. Minority parties getting Which a lot of votes. If you look at like the European elections, because people, a lot of people didn't turn out to vote, it increased someone like the BMP's proportion of the overall vote just because people couldn't be bothered yeah. to vote. The same um, number of people voted for them. It's just that there were fewer people overall, so yeah. therefore they got a bigger proportion. But I don't think you can. I don't think that's necessarily a valid argument for maintaining an unfair system. No, I think no. you then have you then have to do more work to explain, you know, why you think particular parties are good, bad, or indifferent, yeah. and. Uh, and, 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 and to encourage people to vote and to engage in the democratic system. And maybe more people would um, be engaged if they felt their vote was, was worth something. The people out there who've put their, their uh, constituency into voter power, is it voterpower.org.uk, and found out they've got, their, their vote is worth 0.001 of a vote. 
it has that motivational for people. But under a proportional yeah. representation scheme, it would actually be worth a vote. A bit more. <laughs> I mean, in countries like Australia and things, it's actually compulsory to vote, isn't it? I mean, we've got one of the lowest turnouts in Europe, I believe. Yeah, and it, it shows a disillusionment overall. Funnily enough, their turnout is not that much higher, though. Like, you, you, you get fined if you, if you don't vote, but still, a lot of people don't, don't Okay, vote. if I had my laptop in reach, I'd be going on Wikipedia right now and check, but I thought it was like 98% turnout. N not in Queensland, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Go on, you carry on, I'll just try and look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was my thing for Room 101. Simon? Right. Anticipating the sharp intake of breath. Um, <gasps> yeah. Um, I'd like to get rid of clueless users. <laughs> <laughs> Any nominations? <laughs> Any particular users? Well, uh, the thing is, looking at all the bugs and things that go on on Launchpad... A lot of them are people searching for information or should really do a bit of research and, and find things out for themselves. And it come back, comes back to what um, Simon said yesterday about educating people and helping people and getting people to find out for themselves. I was a clueless user um, and I came to Linux and now uh, with the help of people like Alan who sort of said, you know, guided me to a point and then said, you know what, Google is your friend. Go and find it. And it I want people to learn for themselves instead of just being clueless and saying to somebody else, fix it for me. But would that mean that you would have got booted out <laughs> yourself? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, Everyone starts somewhere. That's like, that's like driving down it's the road and saying, it's like driving down the road and saying all these people who've just passed their test, they should all die because they're, you know, they're clueless drivers. Yeah, they are, but so were you. You weren't, you weren't born with a launch pad ID, although... <laughs> That might be a good idea <laughs> in the future. But, you know, you, you can't just uh, evict all the people who are slightly lower down the evolutionary scale than you. The point <laughs> is that it, it's not about them all disappearing. It's about... I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the principle of clueless users. So well, how do you filter them? What do you do? What, what do you do? Not let them have a computer until they've passed a test? Grab. Did someone just say Grab. <laughs> You cannot grep people. <laughs> That's oh. I think the real part comes in, how do you pipe them into it? <laughs> you With need a, great difficulty. You need a big <laughs> socket. <laughs> so, you, get, you get rid of them by educating them. Go on, Fabi, try and say something. Just one thing I want to say, not to be mean here, but like if, if, if your argument is that you have lots of people on Launchpad looking for information, shouldn't you just like fix your main web page or provide a way of, you know, of, of getting them into another channels. I mean, I get your point. There are lots of clueless users, but there are lots of clueless people everywhere. Yeah. You can't get rid of them, otherwise we'll... Give them like a chance to get a clue. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so, if, so basically, I think to summarize, uh, if they're not willing to better themselves, then start <laughs> reducing help anyway. Is that pretty much what you're saying? No, don't reduce help. If they're not prepared to better themselves... That's their fault. So what, can you give us an example of a clueless user act? Yeah, give us a bug number. <laughs> we can go and have a look at it. <laughs> no, I can't. Is it the people else? who reply to a bug report and think it's like a forum and put a me too or a, yeah, this sucks and I hate it and you should fix it for me or something? Is it that, it's just the kind of people who don't have the knowledge to fix it themselves and no. see a computer no, as an appliance? it's about RTFM. You know, read the flipping manual. Yeah, Most some, of it. Okay. It comes from Plus, that. Shouldn't it be easy enough that you don't have to? Mm. Exactly. No one, no one reads a manual for Amazon.com. Nobody you starts off by reading the manual. Buy a book. Well, yeah, maybe. I'm actually, I, I, I can actually understand Simon a lot. I mean, that not even with clueless people. I mean, I get one of my pet peeves is I post something on Identica. I'm like, ow! It just cut my finger off. It hurts. And I get people writing me, "Did you really cut your finger off?" Um, I mean, you know, there are lots of people like that who just will write something because it's so easy without thinking about it. Um, and I, I'm sure you, like, as Ubuntu UK, get, get these emails as well. Mm. Like, you get these emails where, the, where this guy obviously hasn't listened to your podcast or hasn't listened, you know, mm. closely or hasn't yeah. thought about before writing the email. So you'll always get that. I, I think I understand where you're coming from, but I think we can't stop that. 
this is basically coming from your new developer perspective on life, isn't it? From triage no, large pet books. I'm not it trying is. to lift my or elevate my position to that of developer. I just I've, I'm seeing a little. I'm bit not more saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it saying you're packaging. changing your perspective. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm seeing it from a different point of view. Yeah. I see developers from a different point of view as well, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the distance. I'm not a developer. Yeah. Generally, yeah. Running away, normally. <laughs> Hang on, just before you start, Dave, I've been uh, doing a bit of research during that last <laughs> section, and uh, Wikipedia does confirm your uh, hypothesis that... Uh, well, this is Wikipedia, let's remember. Yeah. But Fair it yeah. says, um, yeah, in uh, country Australia and countries like Malta, where voting is compulsory, uh, particip participation usually reaches 95%, which is oh, what you said. Okay. See, I am, I, I'm wired into Wikipedia. In fact, did Once you again, did that you information that is from Wikipedia, <laughs> yeah. so we don't know how reliable I, I, it is. I hope someone actually did that just to make that there. correct just before we went there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's at the back with a net. So carry on, sorry. Dave, must be your idea now. Okay. <laughs> okay, I've had to think of a third one now because... Uh, Have we both done your two? No, no, you, no Simon's okay. did done one of mine, but we went on to that. But anyway. Anyway. Okay. Linux is great. The whole area is great. Everything's great. But zealots really do get on my nerves. Free software is really good, but some people think it's perfect. And it's like rosy eyes and think that... Microsoft is evil and, you know, Obama and uh, M dollar and stuff like that. That stuff really gets on my nerves. You know, I wish people would actually put it in perspective and say it's good. Yeah. Some things are much better. Some things are awesome, but not everything rocks about it. And actually, some proprietary applications can also be good. That's one of my things. But come on. Microsoft is pretty evil. I mean, I, I, do, ah, I do. Room one. I want. Okay, can I change that? I want Fab in Room One Hundred One. <laughs> it was. It was a hard word. It's a big word. They're not evil. They just have a way of doing things. They're about money. That doesn't make them evil. Okay. See, this is this is why I, I personally, I'm I'm quite. Um, you know, I do that a lot. The M dollar thing, because I actually think that fits. Like, evil is evil is a bad word for this because it's pretty hard to define what evil actually means but um, I think they're all about money um, you know they do if you deal with them they do every I, I mean every big comp corporation is um, but yeah I don't know I, I still think there are corporations that are eviler than others eviler yeah more evil I don't know <laughs> so hang Back on to the what are they well. actually doing that's evil suing so people like Tom Tom over uh, the uh, fat Patent. Okay, Only everyone uh, very is recently a patent, everyone, a patent that loads of other people had agreed is okay with them. Well, did they, they have didn't. a CEO who goes on stage and says that open source is evil, and or he did say that it's like a cancer. No, he, uh, yeah, he actually said uh, we were communists or something, didn't he? As well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're yeah. just words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, What's he actually done? If they're just words, then why isn't us saying they're evil just words well, that, as well? It is, it is. It's as bad as each other. You know, you can't have... I mean, it's like school children. It's like, you know, oh, well, he said that, so therefore I can say that. I mean, all of it's bad, yeah. But, I mean, the, th the fact is, is Red Hat and Chronicle, you know, they are trying to make money out of software. So why, I mean, can, can they be called evil? Well, if they do something, like, I, I, tr I tend to judge companies by their past record. And I try to judge them by what they do. And um, I haven't seen Red Hat. I mean, I've, I'm not this long in the Linux world, but from, from what I'm, I have researched, I haven't seen them do stuff like Microsoft does. Like Microsoft, when they went into the EU and tried to get oh, XML pushed as a standard, and they, tr they bribed people there to get it as, you know, pushed as a standard. And... Um, I'm just not, I don't forget these kind of things. I think we should, we have to remember them. And when they then two years later, they say, oh, we love open source. Um, I just see them skeptically. Um, I mean, I say they are evil, but um, I, get, I, get, I get your point that it's maybe not the most reasonable thing to say. Isn't okay. it more about the people who, are, who say those things than the actual companies? Your, your, your hatred was more of the people who use those terms. Oh, you yes. You said it was the zealots. Oh, yes, yes. But surely you get... Well, if you change zealot to be passionate people, you know, there are people who are passionate about um, Subaru Impressors. There are people who are passionate about BMW. Oh, they, they can go in the rumors. In fact, I'm just going to chuck everyone in the room. 
Everyone except Thanks, you. Dave. Yes, it's going to be a pretty weird. lonely place, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> also by RC. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think um, I, the kind of zealots I think are worse are people who, you know, we all try to, um, I think we're all guilty of this, we, we try to convert um, people to Linux um, because... I mean, I do it because I think it's just better and would be better for them to use it. But there's a point where somebody just blatantly doesn't want to or can't, and there's a point where you have to stop. And there are people who don't stop. And they're everywhere. I mean, there are Ubuntu people who don't stop. There are Fedora mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who go on about, you know, use Fedora, use Fedora, use Fedora. And you say to them, no, I use Ubuntu, and I'm not going to use Fedora. And that's the point where you just have to stop. And people who don't stop at that point, they Yeah, but those, those well. kind of people I, I care less about. The, the people who want to convert you from one desktop to another, the people who say use KDE instead of GNOME, the people who say you should be using this desktop e instead of that one. instead of Vim. I, I frankly don't care because they're not target audience for me. I want to get people who are not using Linux or Ubuntu or whatever um, converted. So I, you know, I'm less interested in the, in the violently zealotry people within the community. But they're, they're, they're time-wasting more than anything. I, I think I come to this viewpoint, possibly, because I think I might have been in that area myself at one point. <laughs> well, all Revelation. People, all people without flat caps are idiots. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I was in, in that area before, and I, I think I might have used the M$ sometime in my, in my past. And uh, I think that when I was actually trying to get people to use my free desktop of choice, um, I found that when I was saying, basically I was saying, you know, what you're using is rubbish, you know, this is awesome. And you just saw, saw their eyes just glazed over and thought, yeah, he's trying to sell me something. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's, it, he's not telling the truth. So actually I say, yeah, actually what you're doing, and when people say, oh, what do you think about Windows 7? I'll say, well, I've heard really good things about it, but it's not for me. And I don't just say, oh, it's rubbish, because actually I don't know that much about it. So I just say, you know, it's not for me, but I hear it's some good, but actually, do you want to give what I try? ago you know so i don't sort of ram it down their throats and say it's rubbish because actually i don't know it's rubbish because i've never used it you're lucky <laughs> <laughs> yeah well right. i mean I, i've got to say i've always done the same thing i mean I, I've, I've always taken that approach right from the start i don't know maybe it's just something to do with me but i've always thought the more you preach at people the less they listen mm, I, I, what i tend to do is i use um free software wherever i can and when people ask me, you know, what are you doing there? What's that about? I tell them. I don't rush out in the street and go, have you seen this? Do you know what I'm doing with this computer? But if I'm stood there and they go, what's that on that computer? I, yeah. I tell them. You know? Soft advocacy, really. Yeah. Okay. Right. Popey, you've got to have something good, I'm sure. Actually, you've all used mine. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, and he, that was what I was going to do as well. Fabs is real <laughs> trouble. <laughs> so, yeah. my, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Laura? Uh, online servers that ask self, a self-selecting sample of geeks to speculate about whether they want something to change in future or not. Okay. Such as, with the whole button debate, there are so at least two, possibly three surveys quoted where people were asked to say whether they wanted the button side to change. And people never want to change. <laughs> but this was held up as evidence that we shouldn't change the side of the buttons. And the whole debate just became a, well, I feel like this, I feel like that. And these yeah. surveys supposedly gave scientific credibility to the argument. So is, is this the anti-button club did a survey of our anti-button members and found out that we were all anti-button? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Is there such a club? <laughs> it's a very special there, club. There are a lot of people who visit things like, well, I know one of the surveys was on, uh, one of the surveys was on the Ubuntu forums. Right. And there are a lot of people who visit the Ubuntu forums. Yeah, and yeah. I know you get a lot of very passionate people who visit the Ubuntu forums. And some of them will be pro, some of them will be anti. Does their, does their vote not count? It's not about their vote counting. They're not representative of the target user base of Ubuntu. What, people who use it aren't target market? <laughs> no, the people who go on forums yeah, yeah. and post bugs aren't the target market of Ubuntu. Mm. So what, who should they have asked? Walked out in the street and said, mm. do you have a computer? What side do you think the buttons should be on? And then use that as a, as a gauge. That would be more representative of the population that you're trying to target, whether or not they use Ubuntu. Now, hang on. I mean, I'm going to take from what Laura says, and I think in some ways I actually agree, because... What we tend to do is, particularly, I think, in England, is, is it, well, I don't mind for me so much, but I'm worried about the minority 
uh, you know, of, of users. And I, I think that is possibly a bit, you know, people who don't really mind for themselves. Can you what, see what project, that's... Projecting that no. um, this, it, this might be problematic for all those people yeah, over there. I'm no, worried on behalf of all those people over there without actually asking yeah. those people over there. And the vocal minority, you know. Mm. So um, just one question. What is the target user base? I mean, slogan used to be Linux for human beings, so that was everyone. Yeah. Um, now that... I don't know. No, it's Linux for cool people. <laughs> Linux, Linux for people who like the buttons on the left. <laughs> Linux, for, Linux for Mac users, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> people who wear square spectacles and aubergine jumpers. No, way. no comment. So, Fab, have you got a donation for 101? Well, I had one, which we, which we all had, um, which we all said we're not going to do. I'm, I'm just going to do this. Um, just quickly, the, the obvious ones, of course, Pulse Audio. And I don't think, <laughs> as podcasters, we don't actually have to talk about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, but I don't know. Hang on. But why is Pulse Audio so bad? Because it breaks all Bra the time. And and Elsa was perfect. No, that breaks. No, as well. but that's not that's not an argument. So that doesn't break as much. Know. No, but the 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 thing we have it should never be used because it's broken or because it's not finished yet. Or my, my thing. My thing. So, sorry. Um, my thing is they haven't fixed it. They're obviously working since I've been using Linux. I mean, when Ubuntu switched to it, that, that was ages ago. How many releases ago was that? They've been fixing and breaking and fixing it again the whole time. And I just think, I don't know, what are they doing? I mean, how long do you actually need to sort, to sort those features out? Well, you need people to test it. Otherwise, you won't know where it breaks. Yeah, but you don't want the clueless users to post <laughs> bugs about it. <laughs> yeah. Clueless yeah. bugs. And but I think we need a decent upstream. Yeah. But the, the problem, I think, with Pulse Audio was that it, it, it was, it's been pushed too early before it was ready for somehow. It came into Fedora, I think it was Fedora 8. Um, it was um, Werewolf. Uh, that it came in there, and I couldn't understand why, because it wasn't really finished and it didn't work. But for some reason, well, Fedora kind of liked to go for the new cutting edge stuff anyway. And it went in there, and I thought, oh, well, it's, you know, it's a cutting edge kind of distro, so that's cool. And then Ubuntu quickly went to it, and everyone else quickly jumped on it. And it was just like everyone sort of somehow made it a standard when it wasn't even finished or ready to be used. And I just think that worries me a little. And you're saying things like, um, you know, it, it needs to be fixed, and we need to test it, but why, why, you know, they're the new kids on the block, so why does everyone else have to fix their stuff? to make it work with, with what they've just created? Shouldn't they be making their stuff work with what's already there as well? Shouldn't it be a, a bit of a give and take? Well, I think one of the arguments that the developers had was that um, Pulse Audio exposes some of the bugs that were already there latent in okay. audio device drivers, yeah. for example. And the only way you're going to expose those is to run Pulse Audio mm. with those hardware devices. And then you start discovering, you know, crackles when you plug a headphone cable in or you discover that um, actually you can't have Skype and Flash and um, Rhythmbox all going at the same time, whether you want to or not, I don't know. But <laughs> you can't have all those things and your audio just work without crashing. And you, ca you can't do that without, without people testing it. And the only way you test it is put it in the distro. But one of or the you get a very, very small number of people testing it. One, one of the bad things I actually think with Pulse Audio is that I've tried, you know, when it crashes, I try to file bugs, and that it's just really hard. I don't know what it is about the thing. It's really hard to get useful information out of it, to actually file a bug. I mean, the only thing I can do is just basically go to Launchpad. Let's say I use Ubuntu, and I'm like, yeah, Pulse Audio crashed. I mean, that, that bug's not worth filing, because that's, that doesn't help mm. anybody. There's a, a little program I'll talk about that helps you do that. <laughs> See Popey afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, you got, you'll have some homework I've to do. I've got a quick one, yeah. Okay. Um, I was, I was going to do sim similar to Dave, but from a slightly different angle. Um, one of the things I'd kind of like to, to, to banish to Room 101 in some ways is the insularity of the open source um, world in some ways, because it's great that we're all, we all know each other and we all get on, and that's what makes this so great. But I worry sometimes that we don't talk to anyone outside the open source world. There are people found, outside? Yeah, exactly. Well, I found I went to um, Liverpool Bar Camp, and, uh, you know, because we're in this world where we all talk to each other and we all reinforce each other's views in some way, we get this distorted idea that everyone in the outside world must also be kind of similar and think the same. And then you go to something like uh, an event like Barcamp Liverpool and find that like five of the people there are into open source stuff and nobody else, a lot of them didn't even know what you're talking about. And I, that really opened my eyes to the fact that we've got to get more involved with the outside 
community and, and not just kind of stick to talking to each other? I think there was an element of that in the digital economy, um, com like discussions on Twitter or wherever, where there were a lot of people interested, but the perceived number of people interested and fighting about it seemed bigger because everyone on Twitter seemed to be talking about mm. it. And that proportion of the entire UK was probably quite tiny. Yeah, I think yeah. there were 5,000 people talking about it on Twitter, which is a lot for it's, a single website, it's, but yeah. it's a How fraction many of, them were, of a Were they all in the UK, though? Because, I mean, well, could, possibly could have been, not. Even if you assume that they were, it's a fraction of one constituency for one MP. Yeah. And that's the thing when you get, like, Tom Watson uh, being some kind of hero, and he actually doesn't get a huge amount of that support in practice when it comes to the polls. But you sort of get this perception that there's going to be this great movement. Mm. And I think it's good. I think it's good everybody got together. But you've got to keep that perspective. Mm. How, do you, how do you solve the problem that we're insular and that we're not, uh, we're not talking to other people? I mean, you, you can invite people to come along and give talks, but they're going to talk. It's preaching to the converted. You know, you go along to Fosdem, it's full of... Geeks. If you come along to an event like this, it's a number of geeks. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I don't know the answer. I'm just saying. I think that as you know, that we can do things like go to um, events that maybe you wouldn't expect, uh, you know, free software people to be at. Like go to, um, I don't know, other technology events because we seem to get stuck in this loop of only going to the Linux or open source conferences, and we should be going to bigger general technology conferences and things like bar camps and things that aren't just about and, and engaging with people who. You know, on, and who don't know already about uh, free software and open source stuff. And Part of the problem with that is that um, anybody who you see at an event like that who's essentially giving away free software, mm. people sort of outside this world don't understand that and would sort of back away thinking there's got to be something dodgy going on there. Nobody gives away an operating system. But the on, then you have to talk to them. I mean, the only thing you can do is try to explain it to them if they then still they don't want. I mean, we, we gave away some CDs on Software Freedom Day in, um, in London a couple of years ago. We were walking down um, Tottenham Court Road and we had a whole load of Ubuntu CDs and some leaflets and we were handing out CDs to, to people. And uh, one guy uh, walked up to us and said, what are you doing here? And we said, well, we're handing out free software. And he said, uh, what, was it some kind of cult or something? And we're like, they were all wearing orange jumpsuits. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's kind of... You can see how it can be perceived from people on the outside that we are, you know, it is cultish behavior. It can be more subtle by just, if you're giving a presentation somewhere, using Ubuntu and making sure people see that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, we had um, the Ignite Liverpool events recently, which uh, some of the guys here were involved with, Andy and Adrian and people, and Neil, I don't think Neil's gone, and Andy Feeney's there. But, um, you know, it was a lot of the talks were about things like art and not specifically technology, but I did a five-minute talk just trying to explain to people just the basics of what Linux is, and, and I'm sure most of them didn't, I'm sure none of them went home and went, I must download this and install it now. Maybe one of them did, but, you know, that's how you, you've got to make a start that way. Like. Well, that sounds like your homework then. Um, to go out and, and to engage in some new and some varied communities. John, you yeah. John's got a... Um, un ironic for the monkey, the, the mic monkey, I've actually got something to say. Okay. Um, two things. First was um, I saw a lot of discussion about the Ubuntu hour. I can't remember if that was on the Ubuntu UK mailing list, yeah. which was encouraging people if you're running... Basically, it's, it's not just... A, it's, it was a particularly Ubuntu thread, but it was on the Ubuntu... Um, mailing list says so fairly obvious, but if you're on, if you're running Linux on as your desktop operating system on a laptop that you can carry around, so obviously don't take your desktop to a coffee shop. If you go to a, if you go to a <laughs> coffee shop or um, a, a, a pub or something like that, sit in a vaguely prominent place with your laptop doing fun things like compies. Or, um, you know... <laughs> Sit there just spinning that cube round around, around, Spinning the cube, around, around, around. wobbling your windows, <laughs> right, okay. um, you know, and those sorts of things. Uh, and sort of when somebody comes over and says, ooh, what version of Windows is that? You say, well, actually... Here, have a CD. It isn't. Well, not, not even necessarily here's a CD, but um, actually it isn't. Um, here's, here's some info... You know, here's a flyer. Because if, if you give someone a CD, first thing they're going to go is, ooh, has it got a virus on it? Well, okay, I'm assuming that this isn't people like my aunt or someone like that. But, you know, um, they're, not gonna, they're not just going to put something... I hope they wouldn't just put something randomly in their computer and run it. Yeah. Um, Jack the, Bauer's calling. <laughs> <laughs> the, that Ubuntu Hour started from a guy called Fabian Rodriguez, um, and 
he was um, visiting his home uh, country, he lives outside his home country, and he was visiting his home country, and he just emailed his friends and said, can you let everyone know I'm going to be in this coffee shop at this time? It's just going to be one hour, and he just said, I'm just going to be there, turn up, come and say hello. And it was just sit down, have a chat, and then leave after an hour. It wasn't formally presentations, there mm-hmm. wasn't any, anything massively formal decided to do there. It was just a that's where I'm going to be for an hour. And yeah, people have taken that and run with it and some people take laptops and leaflets and CDs and other people just sit there and other people come up and start talking to them. I mean, I was, I was, I was doing something vaguely similar to that when the EPCs came out in that I was going to shops where they were selling EPCs and you had the windows and predominantly the, just, it was when the windows ones were just on the cusp of being the only ones you could get. And I was saying, so I was saying oh, I was, you know, it's a real shame because these things used to run really quickly and now they're going to run really, really slowly because they've started putting windows on mm. them. And people are going, well, what was on them before? And they'd be like, oh, it's this thing called Linux. And this is a bit sad, but I used to kind of I had, I'd give my cards to people and say, you know, if you want to know, if you get one of these and it, it runs really badly, give me a shout and, and I'll give you some more details about it. Now, to be fair... No one did actually contact me about it. Oh, that was going to be my next question. I that that s- must be because your phone number was wrong. <coughs> on I, yeah. I do suspect it might have been because it was like in the technology bit in, so, in Selfridges and people that were buying computers in there probably were going to get their servants to, to you know, say, get it running. You can buy computers yeah. from Selfridges. Of course no, you can. I, I think you can buy is, anything from Selfridges. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I think the thing is, with things like the Ubuntu Hour and such like that, is if people show an interest, don't just let them get away. You've got to follow them home, and you've got to bang on their door, and you've got to really tell them. You know, they've really got to see the light. When we complaining about zealots, uh, <laughs> 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 this the Jehovah's Witness approach to, to Ubuntu or, or Linux. I stand there with a copy of uh, the Ubuntu magazine. Have you heard the good no, news about Mark now. Shuttleworth? <laughs> Listen, we need to move on. Move it on. So uh, that, those are all our things for Room One Hundred and One, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed some of them. We've got, I've got something that I thought, I don't know how much time we've got, but I've, I've got a crazy idea. Go on then. I wanted to kind work. of, since we've got the radio mic, yeah. I wanted to kind of ask people in the audience what the, fa- the single favourite thing they've seen or done over Good this plan. weekend has been. We can ask a couple of people just to quickly say yep. what Sweet they've enjoyed most. Got... Does anyone want to put their hand up? Or yep. Yep. Damn, that's crazy. There? Well, that is loony. I was thinking more of the time and how much time we've got. Finally found a use for Twitter. Finally, Finally found, found a use for Twitter. Twitter. Which is? To insult what's us going on, on and insulting people. Yeah, Excellent. right. right. The Telling thing is, we can't actually see that from up here. So if it's been fairly I, obvious, I could, could say anything. Is it not? Yeah. It could basically say, once the uh, show is over, we kill them all, and we yeah. would have no idea. Kill <laughs> them. Well, <Yeah. laughs> no, thank you. Right. Um, who's up next? Anybody else got a particular talk that they liked? Yeah, a was talk their favorite or talk? a session or something. The front? Yeah. I, f- I found the talk on uh, image forensics absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Cool. I've heard a lot of good things about that one. I didn't manage to get to it myself, but it does seem to have been a real highlight for a lot of people. Um, anybody else got something they particularly enjoyed? How the T-shirts? It's great to see so many people wearing T-shirts, by the way. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for buying T-shirts and books. Yeah. No, that's it. That's the only thing people enjoyed. Brilliant. Well, <laughs> crazy idea. All right, fair enough. He's got actually, one. Who else has got a comment? There was also the SVG talk, which has given me a lot of ideas to try when I get back to work on Monday. Mm. What, what are you going to do with SVG? Um, I'm going to make some animated graphs. Wicked. Ooh. Okay. I wish I was you. Becky's got a hand Becky's up. got a point here. Uh, so, so John's got to go all the way around here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember the, the guy's name, but the guy who did the opening talk was very good. Simon Fitch. Simon Fitch. Yeah, Simon yeah. yeah, yeah he, he was. was he was excellent. Yes. Yeah. Sadly, Simon couldn't be here today. He's on his way to Norway at the moment to well, save that's somebody. That's for you, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there was... Sorry, Becky, go on. For me, it's um, the chance to actually meet people in person that you talk to in a virtual world. It's nice Brilliant. to see a face. Absolutely. Grim. Even if it is Dave's face. <laughs> Even if it's Dave's face. <laughs> One thing I wanted to mention, uh, once again, Campbell Barton and his talk about the new... Um, mm. New movie they're doing looks really cool. Yeah. So check that out, Blender Foundation. Yeah, yep. some really good work going on there. And, and the, it, it's 
it's just so deep and rich. Some of the finished, some of the finished stuff. It looks amazing. Yeah. It looks like like a Hollywood movie, yeah. basically. Oh, just the last one. The uh, Arduino clock. Uh, oh yeah, the, yeah. John McCarroll's clock. Is he still here? Is John here? I don't know. I can't see who. He's gone. Oh, He's right, going to well. watch the football. Let's not thank him then. Right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. John's um, Arduino clock. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so what do we think of the venue? Uh, those that come last year, is it a better venue? I mean... <laughs> Excellent. It'll be even better when it's finished. <laughs> but seriously, their, their kind of renovation work has overrun a little bit, so there's, it's, it's a bit of dusty in places and things, but um, it's a lovely space, isn't it? It's great. Liverpool mm. as a location for Og Camp. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's not yeah, going to be in Wolverhampton. Really? Scotland, there's no Someone said Scotland. That's Chris saying Scotland. Yeah, I, I got. I got to say the, the the club where the party was last night was possibly one of the coolest locations I've ever seen. Yeah. It, also one of the hottest. I heard there was a rather interesting gig the night here. before as well or something. Yeah, 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 that was really that good. Gig was I felt like yeah. stripping off at that club last night. It was so hot. <laughs> so glad we can did. all be great. You could have took your hat off, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, a little of heat out from your head. <laughs> I can only assume that you've had a kind of hair, hair cutting accident or something underneath there. That's why you've had the, had the, had the hair, uh, cap on all day. Well, when you share a hotel room with two other geeks, yeah. um, well, we haven't told this story, have oh. we? No, now, no, no. <laughs> when you guys checked into your hotel, I should say that Simon, Alan, and Dave were all sharing a hotel room. It was cozy. Room. Yeah. Um, how many beds were there? <laughs> one. Yeah, one double bed between three of you. So, uh, you know, that it was, was fun. You should try it. Don't knock it till you've I tried have this it. mental image of something that is a mix of Morecambe and Wise and some of the most disturbing. <laughs> yeah, but the good thing is, Tony, we're always wearing our. Polo You're always wearing your t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I need the mind bleach now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The big question, I suppose, then is obviously we've uh, uh, we did it last year, we did it this year. Would anybody be interested if we did it again next year? Yeah. 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 I. Didn't quite catch that. Um, would anybody like us to do it again next year? Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, surprised. we'll think about it. Right, so volunteers <laughs> yeah. for organising it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so that was Tony volunteering then. By, well, by yeah. saying that. I, was, I was volunteering everybody. Um, seriously, there's a lot of work that goes into this. So if you haven't got any feedback about any aspect of the weekend, um, everything, the venue, the scheduling, the talks, uh, the facilities, anything like that, um, send it to ogcamp at ubuntu-uk.org. Um, we all get that email. The Linux Outlaws guys get it as well. Um, so please do let us know your feedback. Good, bad, indifferent, constructive criticism. Everything is all welcome. If and someone the, could um, tweet that, what we just said, yeah. send feedback to ogcamp at ubuntu-uk.org. That would be helpful. Then we'll get loads so of that the people who aren't here, who've gone to watch the what, football. So you mean the people that couldn't be bothered to stay? Yeah. yeah Simon Why should Fitz, they Simon Fitz couldn't be bothered. Simon Fitz and Abe Bradshaw. Yeah. Please uh, don't forget to spread the word. Um, obviously we um, pimp it as much as we can but if you go back and blog about it and tell everybody how good it was hopefully next year this will be doubled. Tell, and your, tell your lugs and tell uh, you know, any social uh, software groups and stuff like that. And if you didn't think it was so good you don't need to tell people not to come next yeah. year okay? <laughs> That's right. Well yeah. Sorry. So uh, just quickly, while you mentioned the venue, I wanted to say quickly a big thanks to uh, Peter Louis and the St. John's Ambulance people for yep. keeping everyone yes. safe. Yes. Hopefully you haven't been too busy. No, <laughs> no he okay. hasn't. Right. I felt like having an accident just to, yeah, just to, to, to <laughs> justify <laughs> actually, uh, Peter having something to do. Well, I thought if you I stand should, there, we could all give you a good kick. Yeah, the least one of us could do is fall down the stairs yeah. or something. I, still I got a friction burn from the hand. From, uh, from, is this, and I thought, this is this your hotel again? And I we actually, don't want to know. And I actually felt you sorry to, for them. I thought, oh, should I go and see Next him? year, I think I'll book the St. John's Ambulance for your hotel room. We should also say uh, a big thanks to Dan, Dan Mills for, uh, for yep. doing the in-house tech stuff yeah, thank you in there, the Dan. venue. So a big thank you to Dan. <laughs> and uh, everyone else at the Blackie, all the staff who've helped us out over the weekend. Yeah, all the other venue staff as well. But there's one last yeah. person we want to thank um, as, the, as the, uh, the guys who are up here. And that is uh, our very own Dan Lynch, who has done a shed load of work for this event. Being the, the, the resident, the local resident, Dan has done um, a vast majority of the heavy lifting literally and metaphorically, to get this event off the road. Uh, he's sorted out uh, you know, all the venues and all the details, and he's lived in this venue, I think, for the last couple of months, pretty much. Um, we really couldn't have done it without you, Dan, and it's much appreciated. So please give Dan a big round of applause. Stand up, Dan.
<laughs> now the creature can run over. <laughs> uh, just, just a quick thank you to Chris Proctor. He knows why. Oh, yeah. He knows why. For helping out. Yeah. Was it because Chris Proctor went to go fill up the milk that ran out? Yeah, he got the milk. Yeah, that's, what yeah, he that's did. why. Yeah, that's why. I've got one more quick one that I want to mention, just on a personal note. I mean, we, thanks to all the crew, as we said. Thank you to all the crew. But I want to thank my mum for helping me out. Yeah. So she's Yay. done a great Thanks, job. Thanks, Dan's mum. It's always I've better when your mum helps. I'd say, uh, this is like the bloody Oscars. Dave, Dave and I <laughs> yeah. had a very entertaining time at Costco with your mum. <laughs> <Did> you? Yes, <laughs> we did. <laughs> Dan's uh, mum is great. Yeah, so thanks. Thanks very much for that. Cool. Well, hopefully, we'll see you next year. Bye. Take care. Yay!